His Excellency, President Benigno Simeon Aquino III. Maraming salamat po. Mabuhay po tayo lahat. Medyo mahirap po sumunod kay Chris Chiu tapos kay Tita Judy. <laughs> Chris Chiu is very articulate. No? And I think he casts a more dashing figure than I. By a little degree. <laughs> Tita Judy naman has such a very splendid voice. No? Anyway, I will try my best. <laughs> Tita Judy, Mr. Ra Ryan Ravanzo, Tito Titoy, Representative Lenny Robredo, Mr. Bienvenido Tantoco III, Mr. Luciano Frederick Puyo III, awardees of the 2013 the Outstanding Young Men Awards, Board of Judges and Search, sorry, Search and Working Committee of the Outstanding Young Men, officials and staff of the Outstanding Young Men, Foundation Incorporated and the Junior Chamber International Philippines, Fellow Workers in Government, honored guests, mga minamahal ko pong kababayan, magandang hapong po muli. Mamaya nga, pagkatapos sa pagkatapos po nito, tatawag ako Secretary Abad. Sasabihin ko, para alam ko na kung bakit di ka na-nominate sa TOIM. Matagal ka na nag-graduate sa 40, yung pala upper limit. No? <laughs> At uh, sa ating po honorary na nagsastudy ng neurogerontology, no? kami po ni Secretary Abad, siya siguro magiging uh, pasyente nyo. Ako po, I intend to stay at least young at heart for the foreseeable future. <laughs> This is the fourth time I have led the awarding of the Outstanding Young Men. This year's group of awardees brings the total to 33 men and women. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm going to Tacloban, I think, on Sunday. I guess that's uh, why I'm coughing. <laughs> anyway, the total to 33 men and women, I've had the pleasure of personally congratulating for their work. And given the presence of female awardees past and present, Perhaps it might be time to consider, as my writer suggests, a gender or a more gender-friendly name change. No. Although I also sincerely believe that, um, you, I've, I'm sure all of you have seen the uh, banners proclaiming end violence against women. Okay. I think in about 10 years' time, it will be end violence against men. <laughs> But kidding aside, it is particularly fitting this year that we honor the Toy Awardees right in the middle of the holiday season, a time in which we can look back on the past year and give thanks for our blessings. With the holidays also comes the opening of a new chapter with all the opt optimism and opportunities that a fresh start carries. So these awards are a perfect symbol of the season and also a reminder of the things that must remain constant in our lives, namely service and hope. Service is not an area I need to speak about in great detail, especially to an audience like this one. After all, U9 made a very conscious decision to work for the benefit of others. You know how challenging, how difficult, and how rewarding it can be. And by virtue of your different professions, you know full well that there is no single true path of service. There is only the discernment of a calling and the corresponding commitment to make the most of your God-given talents because this is exactly what you have chosen to do. You are no longer just individuals who happen to excel in your specific fields. With this distinction, you are role models, not only for the communities you have immediate contact with, but also, and more importantly, for a nation of millions. Our countrymen see in your example the fruits of hard work, excellence, and compassion. You are the hope that inspires them to pursue their own dreams, and hopefully, in so doing, to touch the lives of others. This is particularly important now at a time when normalcy and hope are beginning to return to areas affected by Typhoon Yolanda, made possible by the dedication of the people who have come to their aid, including our friends from other shores and especially our countrymen. This is not another thing to be thankful for. Filipinos never stand idly by and let others suffer alone because compassion and the utmost generosity are intrinsic to our people. We saw this in our fellow citizens who flocked to repacking centers day and night, and in students and employees who donated their allowance and salaries to relief efforts. We, thought, um, excuse me, we saw this in the private sector and civic groups who organized their own relief drives. We see this even today in men and women like you who care about fostering change that uplifts their fellow men. There is, of course, Emer Atanasio, 
who embodies our belief that education and training should be attuned to the needs of industry so that our countrymen can make the most of existing opportunities in earning dignified livelihoods. There are those who have helped to raise the level of public discourse in the person of Nicole Corato, who I hope will be a different kind of academic, one who does not lose her audience in a forest of jargon but instead uses her knowledge in the social sciences to add to the political education of the youth, thus spurring positive engagement instead of breeding cynicism and apathy. After all, we have seen how it is possible to make science more accessible to the wider public through the example of Castor de Ocaris, who brings his passion for science to life in a number of ways. From entrepreneurship to a radio program, his efforts go hand in hand with our government's determination to build science literacy, and in so doing, drive learning, research, and development, which are essential to our being a truly modern and competitive nation. Al Gabriel has also given generously of his talents, sharing his innovations and research in food science and technology with micro and small scale enterprises. The kind of technology and knowledge transfer that benefits not only our promising food processing industry, but also helps grow other sectors and consequently the wider economy. Former Governor of Sarangani, Megs Dominguez, promoted the economic growth of his province and also worked to engage indigenous peoples in the process of governance, as well as armed combatants through peaceful dialogue. During his terms, Governor Dominguez employed the same principles that our government and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front have adhered to in forging a just and lasting peace in Mindanao. And this peace is indeed in sight, especially with the recent signing of the Annex on Power Sharing. We have Chris Chu, who went to the same, same school I did. I think we were separated by about four years or so. <laughs> That's why he didn't see me in campus. Whether through the Sangurian Kabataan or his position as a Barangay Kagawad, his business and media engagements or his achievements on the court, he has consistently displayed leadership, modesty, and discipline. In this way, he has already found success, not just as a media personality or athlete, but also as a role model and inspiration for the Filipino youth today and in the years to come. We also have a number of awardees who know how important it is to empower others by fulfilling their basic needs. In this case, health and education. We have doctors Carl Reyes and Pao Silva who have gone above and beyond their oath to help others. Dr. Reyes, for example, was instrumental in opening the first center for congenital heart disease at St. Luke's Medical Center and the Operation Heart Foundation Incorporated. He's also known for coordinating with patients and hospitals for consultation and, and treatment, as well as for donor funding for each patient. On the other hand, Dr. Silva has put his expertise to good use in establishing the first telemedicine program for diabetic eye disease in the Philippines and in guiding the use of cutting edge treatments for retinal diseases reducing the cost of treatment by over 20-fold and making it more readily available to patients. In that example, we see how innovation is not only a tool that facilitates advancements in medicine, but also one that allows us to fulfill our basic obligation to help others. Last, but most certainly not the least, there is also the founder of Gabay Guru, Chai Kabal Revilla. With Gabay Guru's motto, of, I quote, changing the lives of those who change ours, close quote, Chai has dedicated herself to providing continued support for our educators, whether through further education and training or by simply paying tribute to the men and women who guided us in and out of the classroom, thus providing positive reinforcement to what is admittedly a very difficult job. Might I emphasize, these are only some of our awardees' myriad achievements. They may all be working in different fields, but one thing ties them together, a commitment to knowledge and excellence as tools of empowerment. So allow me to say, as I have said before, that events like this are a source of hope and comfort to me. Many people have asked me what will happen to the country when I step down from the presidency, as if to imply that I am the only one putting in long days and nights for this country. Events like this remind all of us that there will never be a shortage of Filipinos who are willing to take on the task of nation building, that in fact, there are so many of us who are working to uplift and empower our fellow men. This is the very principle of Bayanian, of everyone doing his part for a common purpose, a belief which all of you exemplify every day. As you tread your own down matuid in your professional lives, 
This is the very principle of the Outstanding Young Men Awards. So at these events, when I meet people who are as committed to helping others as you are, I know I am looking at those men and women who are working alongside us in building the future of this country, a future characterized by solidarity and genuine meaningful progress, a future where no one definitely will be left behind. Again, my congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Good day.